What's going on, YouTubers? It is your boy, Man. This is going to be a weekly thing. I would like to do Q&As every single Wednesday going forward until further notice. Um, I got this idea from the Off The Rope Show. Why not? He does Q&As Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Let me at least do one a week. You know what I'm saying? And people have been asking me to do more Q&As anyway. So why not take advantage of this opportunity and do one every single week on Wednesdays? So if you want your questions to be answered, please send them to AskFM. The link down below in the description box. And I will get to them every single Wednesday. And the videos will be about 10 to 15 minutes. So I won't get to all of them. But the best ones will be answered um, on Wednesdays. So there you go, guys. I look forward to answering your questions. And before I get started with this one, this one's going to be a little bit longer than 10 minutes. But um, recently, one of my fans passed away. Her name was, if I'm not mistaken, Selena Alicia. And she did an interview with me, actually, on Facebook. And she told me how she was a big fan of mine. And she watched all my videos. And actually spends or takes time out of her day to watch me on YouTube. Which is... <laughs> you guys have no idea how that makes me feel. That's awesome. And it saddens me to hear that she passed away. Um, the cause of it, I have no idea. I was just told she passed away. But um, the interview is down below in the description box as well. Rest in peace. Thank you for watching me. And that that's pretty sad. You know, when you have a fan of yours pass away, that doesn't feel good. Oh, man. Anyways, <laughs> enough of that. Let's get into the meat of this video, the Q&A. So, first question on my list is, are you mad that WWE stripped Daniel Bryan of the championship? No, not really. I don't like it, but I understand why. He can't compete, you know. He is unable to wrestle and defend the championship. And they have a rule, you know. If you can't defend the championship in 30 days, you have to be stripped of it. I don't know how Dean Ambrose got under that radar, but... And others, too. Didn't Santino hold it for, like, three months and didn't even defend it? But since it's the WWE Championship, that one has to follow the rules, you know what I'm saying. So... Again, he's unable to compete, and he needs to take a break anyways. I would rather Daniel Bryan take a break, go away for two months, and come back and win the championship than him have to defend it and make his injury worse. So, no, I'm not really mad that Daniel Bryan isn't champion anymore. Um, which WWE events do you attend so far, and do you enjoy it during those moments? Um... I'm guessing live events I've attended. I have attended WrestleMania 25. I've attended a few Raws, a few SmackDowns. I've attended all the TLCs that have come to Houston, the pay-per-view TLC. And I have to say, yes, I love the live events. I think they're awesome. Um, it's a very different atmosphere, and it's a very different story when you're there live than what you're watching on TV, you know, what you're watching on TV doesn't even capture half the experience it is in the event. So, yes, I enjoy it very much. Do you think that unifying the WWE and heavyweight belts was smart? And what should they do now, such as introducing another title? Um, yeah. <laughs> the World Heavyweight Championship, before it got unified, wasn't even all that important. It, it wasn't. Now, some of y'all might say, but Delex Man, since the championship is gone, that means less opportunities for the younger guys. Okay, you're right, but at the same time, even when these younger guys won the championship, how important were they? Not all that much. Ziggler was champion, and how important was he? Not that much. Jerio, not that much. Big Show, Sheamus, Mark Henry, not that much. They wasn't really all that important. Daniel Bryan was World Heavyweight Champion. He opened up the freaking card at WrestleMania 28. Lost it in 18 seconds. Sheamus won the championship afterwards. And how important was he? Not that much. Exactly. So, honestly, you know what? There being one championship and one top champion is the best way to go for me. 
Did you watch the past years of TNA, 2002 to 2009, before it was a sinking ship? Um, yes. I watched it in 2004. My friend was heavily into TNA, he, and he was anti-WWE. And he got me into it. At first, I tried to not like it, but I ended up falling in love with it. And I started watching it regularly in 2006. I stopped watching it somewhere around then. I just kind of fell off, you know, and just became a WWE nut. Um, but, yeah, I checked it out in 2006, and I thought it was a great product. Nowhere near the crap load it is nowadays. Just saying. Um... Who would you expect to be in next year's WWE Hall of Fame? Owen Hart, Randy Savage, DX. Just because, you know, they put the four horsemen in there. Why not DX? Um, and, um, Taker. The Undertaker. Why not? But, yeah, Savage, Owen Hart, DX, Taker. That already is a fantastic lineup. Those are my picks, of course. Um... Will it be that? Who knows? Have you seen any of my content? And if so, what are your thoughts? Who are you? Richard Harris. I have no idea who you are. So I can't answer that question. What do you think of people entered into the Money in the Bank so far? Okay, let's see. There's Seamus. Cesaro. Uh, hmm. Who else is in there? Oh, Randy Orton. And, um, RBD. Right? So those four. All right, um, not the best picks, honestly. I'm not really, like, frustrated about it, but I'm not excited about it either. The only person I'm excited about so far is Cesaro. Now, if Bray Wyatt gets in there, yeah, I'll be excited for him too. And I'm pretty sure Cena somehow, someway is going to get into this match. And that's going to make me sad, because that pretty much means who's going to win? John Cena. But you know what? I'll have to see how this goes. I'm going to see where it goes first and then decide if I like it or not. Because, not going to lie, the idea of Cesaro or Bray Wyatt winning the championship at Money in the Bank does have me a little excited. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, Let me see what else we got here. What are your thoughts on Paige? I think Paige is a great wrestler. I think Paige can do wonders for the WWE if booked correctly the problem is Paige has these these segments in this direction I'm gonna watch my words because I'll get to that in a future video that I don't think is doing her any favors I think Paige isn't getting enough you know storylines or feuds or enough material for fans to connect to her and relate to her they're just kind of throwing her out there in wrestling. Let's get her a storyline. Let's get her some backstage segment. Let's get her some promo time. Let's get her something where her character can, um, you know, uh, be fleshed out and show the audience who the hell this woman is. And that's the thing. People don't know who Paige is. And I think because of that, they can't relate to her. They don't know how to feel about her. Fans don't hate Paige. They just aren't. Like, uh, they, they don't know how to feel about her, like I said. Unless she watched NXT. Anti-Diva. Oh, she's awesome. You know what I'm saying. But, I like her. I think Paige is awesome. And I think eventually, eventually, fans will draw to her. What are your thoughts on the movie See No Evil featuring Kane? I watched it in the theater with my dad, actually. And it was... <laughs> It was quite entertaining, actually. Um, it wasn't, like, spectacular like any other scary movie out there, but I actually bought Kane as a freaking, you know, psycho killer. So, it was alright. <laughs> Not something I would see more than once, though. What do you think about a possible Daniel Bryan versus Brock Lesnar match at SummerSlam for the WWE Championship? And do you think it could be a better match than Lesnar vs. CM Punk last year? Yes, to that, to the latter of your questions. I do think Daniel Bryan versus Brock Lesnar can be a better match, 10 times better match than um, CM Punk and Lesnar. And that's saying something. Punk and Lesnar last year was the best match of the entire year. It was the match of the year, without question. And I think Daniel Bryan 
versus Brock Lesnar can top that match. I am serious. Think about this, guys. We have these two uh, very MMA-like styles, almost. You have uh, very amateur wrestling-like styles as well, and two characters that just are made for each other. You have the underdog character in Daniel Bryan that's just a walking underdog versus the Beast, where he is going to feel like... He more like David Goliath. I don't like using that term, actually. That's so... It's so cliche now. But in this case, it's actually apropos. You know, Brock Lesnar is this beast. He defeated the Undertaker streak. He's already on top of the world. He's already done this crazy stuff with the UFC and all that kind of stuff. All these credentials, I should say, he should kill Daniel Bryan. For Daniel Bryan to fight Brock Lesnar, not only is he going to have the sympathy of returning from an injury, and he's going to have the crowd behind him, but he's going to have enough, uh, you know, charisma and character to actually get that babyface momentum to go up against the heel that is Brock Lesnar. And the match itself is going to be fantastic. The build doesn't even have to be anything spectacular. Just say Daniel Bryan versus Brock Lesnar. You got it. It's going to happen. And then let them wrestle. It's going to be a fantastic match. It's going to be an awesome match. And if they say Daniel Bryan versus Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam, sold out. Just bam. Tickets are sold. I promise you. The moment it goes on sale, give it about an hour, the tickets will be sold. Because that is a blockbuster match. That is a match for the ages, folks. I'm serious. Daniel Bryan versus Brock Lesnar is a match that we all want to see. Even if Daniel Bryan loses... Understandable. Brock Lesnar. That's someone I can see Daniel Bryan losing to and be okay. It's fucking Brock Lesnar. But if Daniel Bryan beats him, think how awesome that might be. He beat the guy that defeated the Undertaker streak. Whoa. Whoa. Screw it, man. They can go a series of matches. Why stop at SummerSlam? Have an Iron Man match. I can't have CM Punk versus Daniel Bryan. Why not Brock Lesnar versus Daniel Bryan? Um, and the reason I say that, I bring that up, is because someone asked me this question. What is your favorite Brock Lesnar versus Kurt Angle match? Iron Man match 2003 on SmackDown. That has to be one of the best SmackDown matches I have ever seen. If you have not seen Kurt Angle versus Brock Lesnar... Um, 2003, I forgot the date. It happened after SummerSlam, but it was on SmackDown. Just type in Brock Lesnar versus Kurt Angle, Iron Man, and it'll pop up. That was definitely one of Kurt Angle's best matches, one of Brock Lesnar's best matches, one of WWE's best matches, one of SmackDown's best matches, one of the best wrestling matches, period, to ever take place. Definitely a personal favorite of mine. That is... One of the best match, one of the best matches I've ever seen, and you know what? I will answer one more question, and I will call it a day. Let me see. All right, here we go. This is also from, by the way, uh, the person that asked me this is a YouTuber called Nutty Rot Chick. Hey Heather, um, she asked me the money in the bank question, and she also asked me this question: What was the last thing that gave you a mark out moment, Daniel Bryan? Winning the WWE Championship at WrestleMania 30. <laughs> I, I, I don't need to say anything else. Me being a Daniel Bryan fan, that was perhaps one of the highlights of my tenure. This recent tenure, since I started doing these YouTube videos of wrestling. That right there is like the pinnacle, the highlight so far of this tenure of mine. So yes, that is going down in history as one of the best moments, in my personal opinion, to ever happen in wrestling. At least for me. I'll say it like this. One of my best moments. That, guys, is going to conclude my Q&A. Um, again, if you want me to answer more of your questions, just send your questions to Ask FM. I will get to them every Wednesday. I won't discriminate. Whatever question you put on there, I will answer. I won't answer all of them because, like I said before, guys, um, if I answer all of them, I won't, keep, I won't be able to keep these videos below 10 to 15 minutes. Um, this is, right now, it's, you know, 14 minutes. It's about to be 15 minutes. So I'm just going to barely keep it uh, below 15 minutes. So I'm going to end it right here. Thank you guys for watching. Comment down below. Subscribe. Like me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter. Check out my second channel for tribute to matchups and everything down below in the description box. I will catch you guys next time in my next video. Your boy, Deluxe Man, signing off. Deuces.